1975, I lived at the Olympic Stadium with the transgendered uh, people. Khmer Rouge evacuated us from that uh, Olympic Stadium. A lot of Khmer Rouge soldiers came to our place at uh, we were ordered to leave the city at uh, gun point we were not given enough time to pack our luggage they upon reaching my room opened fire at us my four friends died including sarai d rata and pala I was completely terrified. I bore witness to this execution. The great suffering I have suffered uh, is uh, the forced rape and the tortures I ha uh, inflicted uh, on me. And I still live with these memories for the rest of my life. The pain, the suffering has taken its toll. I cannot sleep very well. Indeed, my sleep has been deprived of because of this. And I normally um, have some high temperature fever. I feel dizzy and I have a constant headache. I have no access to medicine. Indeed, uh, this uh, has been the result of the mistreatment. Words cannot be used to describe the great suffering I have had. Because I am an orphan now as the result of the regime. That's all I can tell. The pain is too great. My siblings could not eat could not eat fully and they could not even sleep because of hunger. I was so pitiful on my younger siblings. They were so hungry and if they could even have rice with salt to eat, they would be very, very happy. My parents and myself could not do anything for my younger siblings but to sit and to shed our tear. Next morning, two of my younger siblings died. We did not know what time they passed away. And they continue to die. And my youngest daughter, um, sister, Jiang, during a meal time, before she died, she begged for just a piece of rice to eat. That is a tragedy under the Khmer Rouge regime that I could not ever, I could not forget. We were starved and we were given food like animals. A fortnight later, my father died. In early morning, in fact, I saw him uh, sleeping. I went to uh, wake him up. He opened his eyes and asked me what time it was. And I looked at the sky and I thought it's all. I told him it's almost seven a.m. He closed his eyes and then he died. He died in his sleep. On the 17th April 1975, Khmer Rouge soldiers entered our house and asking for the owner, and I replied that the owner was not in, and that I was the one who got the house. I was asked repeatedly, and I maintained the same response that I was the guard. They did not believe it and they entered the house, they smashed things inside the house.
and subsequently my husband heard the noise he came out and the Khmer, four or five Khmer Rouge soldiers took him by the collar and asking whether he was the house owner and my husband said no he was not the house owner we were the guards but the Khmer Rouge uh, did not believe my husband and they said because of his physical body he did not look like a guard so he was beaten with the rifle butt and he was kicked and they asked him uh, to tell them the truth that he was the owner of the house he maintains his response and I begged them uh, not to mistreat my husband they did not listen to me they kept kicking him it was painful for me to watch it then they tied his hands behind his back I crawled to back them at their feet to release him 